I think this is kind of a hard question, so let's take a look. KD Lecca and colleagues found that the sun's corona provides an advanced indication of solar flares, intense eruptions of electromagnetic radiation that emanate from active regions in the sun's photosphere and can interfere with telecommunications on Earth. So notice I kind of read that last part kind of fast because I know it's not going to be about the definition of this thing. It's the, what does the corona do? What, what are we saying about the topic of the coronas? They provide an advanced indication of solar flares. That's the piece that this is about. Now notice, preceding a flare, we're talking about things kind of happening in a certain time time sequence. Uh, preceding a flare, the corona temporarily exhibits increased brightness above the region where the flare is. Okay, so my kind of dumb way to enter something in the blank here would be like where the flare is going to be, right? Like that's probably what you would say, right? It's preceding the flare, so it comes before it, and then what happens? It exhibits increased brightness above the region where the flare is about to be. And we can see that from the, that's kind of confirmed from the first sentence, right? Katie Leck and colleagues on the sun's corona provides an advance indication, right? It, it's about like he, first that we see the, the flare or the corona, then we see the flare in the same spot. So they are saying this uh, pretty clearly, but then the words are tough. So uh, going to be kind of something coming before it. Well, antecedent kind of means that if something is antecedent, it means come before. So that seems to be related to time and order. So impending though also means like it's going to happen. So you might have heard like a phrase like impending doom, right? Like something bad is about to happen. It's impending. It's going to happen. So both of these words though are, are very close. So let's, let's hold them off for a second. Innocuous has nothing to do with anything. This is a really good SAT word. It's one that the SAT seems to love. It just means that something is harmless. Um, it, it, it's not going to have a strong effect. It's weak. So harmless, and you know, is, is a, the kind of like the, the easiest way to summarize this word. Um, and we're not talking about this causing harm or not harm. It's, it's part of the sun. We're far away from it. So I don't, I don't know what we're talking about. So this just nothing to do with anything. Now, perpetual is also a word that has to do with time, but this means that something lasts uh, basically forever. So a very long time or just forever, uh, you know, we think of maybe a perpetual motion machine. This is a scientific idea. It's not possible, but a perpetual motion machine would go on and on forever and, and keep working without any added energy. But, you know, because of friction and things that just doesn't work. Um, so some of these words you will encounter in like random places in school. This is why you should, you know, pay attention in any class. You never know what's going to come up. But here we do have this issue of maybe the, the usage of words. Both of these do seem to be related to the topic. The actual answer is B, impending. So uh, the flare is, it, it, it's basically because of the definition I put there is, is better. The flare is going to happen. So it's impending, it's, it's about to happen. Now the problem with the word antecedent is that's actually flipping the order. I think, I think I'm reading this correctly, where that would say that the flare is the thing that comes first because and if something is antecedent to something else, uh, it comes first. The first first thing comes first. I'm giving a bad example. But uh, basically, if they said the flare is antecedent, if they said the flare is antecedent to the, what is it, the corona, that means first the flare happens, then the corona happens. But we want to say the opposite, right? Preceding the flare, meaning coming before the flare, the corona temporarily exhibits increased brightness above the region where the flare is going to happen next. So it's very sneaky what they're doing here. They know that you probably know these words enough that you understand that both have to do with time and, and coming before or after something else. Uh, but yeah, they 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 gave you words that one of them just completely reverses the order of what they're saying. And notice that that trap answer, choice A, comes first, right? I think they know that some of you might just be like, oh, that's definitely it, and then not even bother to think about the other choices. So even if you studied your words, you might fall for this trap. You might know the definitions, but still kind of fall into it. So always read all the choices, because sometimes what the SAT is doing is it's it's playing with what we would consider like the usage of a word. How does it fit in a certain situation? Certain words can't be swapped even though they have very similar definitions. This might not quite be that, but it, it reminds me of it. So I kind of consider this an issue of usage where we have two words that do kind of have the right definition, but one of them kind of, the order gets reversed. And so we got to watch out for that. So a uh, hard question for sure, hard vocabulary, and then kind of some hard logic built into it.